All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our virtual information session about our healthcare management program here at Nebraska Methodist College. We are really excited to share information about this um, awesome degree and uh, hopefully answer any questions that you might have. So today we are going to be joined by um, three presenters, myself and um, two other staff members who all have introduced themselves here in a moment. My name is Megan Kokenj and I am the Director of Enrollment Services here at the college. Hi, my name is Dr. Whitney Robertson. I am the Program Director for this program as well as for the Master of Business Administration program here at the college. Hello, I'm Austin Wagner, and I'm the Recruitment and Admissions Coordinator for the Healthcare Management Students. Great, thank you. All right, well, this session is probably going to last about 45 minutes in length, and it is being posted to our college YouTube channel. Uh, before we dive into specific information about the healthcare management program, I do want to share a little bit of information about the college. So we are a private um, college private not-for-profit college that is healthcare focused. So all of our majors are healthcare related. We have uh, 1,200 students currently enrolled at Nebraska Methodist College, and we have been around for over 130 years. So uh, we have been educating healthcare professionals for, for quite some time now. We also offer over 40 areas of study, and that ranges anywhere from nursing, allied health, to healthcare management. And we are affiliated with the Methodist Health System, which is located here in Omaha, Nebraska. So with that, I'm gonna hand things over to Dr. Whitney Robertson, and she's gonna share um, some specifics about our Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Management program. All right, thank you. Let's hop over to the next slide here. Great. Well, I'm so glad that you have taken the time to look into some details on this Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Management program. Really proud of this degree here at the college. And there are some important highlights that I want to emphasize for you. The first and one, one that I think students find the most appealing because I often see this comment in exit survey results. What did you really like about the program? One of the things that pops out is students love that this entire degree can be completed 100% online. So it's a, it's a full bachelor's degree and every course um, we offer online. Now, many of these courses we also offer on the ground or in a classroom, but you do have the ability, if you're a student in this program, to take everything online, which offers a great deal of flexibility for you. If your schedule demands that you can only log in and engage with your coursework, you know, at 11 p.m. at night, you can certainly do that. You don't have to worry about being on campus at a certain time. So, so there, there's that important highlight. Another important highlight is, as Megan mentioned, all of our um, all of our programs here at the college are healthcare focused, and of course, this is no exception. This is a bachelor's degree focusing on healthcare management, the business of healthcare. And with that, all of the program specific courses, healthcare finance, healthcare quality, organizational behavior and theory, these are all taught with healthcare as that sort of backdrop. So the case studies will all be healthcare relevant. Healthcare finance is different than um, general finance, right? The, 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 the important financial ratios are different in the financial, uh, in the healthcare industry than they are in other industries. Um, healthcare is much more capital intensive than something like software or an IT industry. So it's important to us that all of the program specific courses that you would take during your time in this program have that healthcare focus to them so that you're truly getting a degree that is not just a general four-year degree, but it's healthcare management focused. There are a number of scholarship opportunities that are available. I believe we'll touch on that a little bit later on in the presentation. And as is true of all of our programs, this program, we do strive for it to be as transfer friendly as possible. So many of our students have already completed some college credits at other institutions, that's not uncommon. And we work really hard to try to find courses that will transfer into this program. So you're not having to take it again. 
um, students are able, or potential applicants, I should say, are able to go online to our website, methodistcollege.edu, and look up transferology to enter some of those courses that they think may be eligible for transfer credit. And um, transferology is a way for them to be able to determine, yes, okay, I will be able to transfer this in. But you're also able to just reach out to me as the program director, our registrar's office. We can do an informal review up to the point of your application to advise you on what you might be able to transfer in. We want you to be able to capture as many of those credits as possible. And then the program start dates are throughout the year. So these three months correspond to the beginning of each of our fall, spring, and summer semesters. You can get started whenever you like and whenever it's convenient to you. Okay, so what do healthcare managers do? I mean, that's a very broad question, so it's going to have a very broad answer. Importantly, healthcare managers, this role might be right for you if you're passionate about the healthcare industry and the health and well being of people and communities, but maybe you feel for yourself that you're going to be able to have a broader impact on health. Um, at a, in a non-clinical role, right? So not really one-on-one -on -one with patients, which is of course the essence of healthcare, um, but at a higher, at a systemic role, making broader changes, policy changes, process changes, um, uh, working to improve the quality, the efficiency of delivery of healthcare services at uh, sort of in the, in the back end, in the business side to be able to affect a larger number of patients or and, and as well as those um, who are in your department. So this is a great role. It is essential for the success of a thriving um, healthcare business for people to be in a management position. So again, it is not necessarily patient facing. Um, no direct patient care would you be providing in this role, but you would be responsible for the success of the department. Um, you would be responsible for budgets, for staffing, for, for records, um, preparing the department for audits. They, all of these are essential functions and operations of healthcare that a lot of people don't really think about when they think about this industry. They think about the patient facing side of it. Healthcare managers are absolutely essential. And so we, um, we feel that this degree prepares you for those roles. Now with the healthcare industry being so robust, it is a huge percentage of the Amer um, American GDP and the portion of the US economy that is healthcare focused only continues to grow. That means that the opportunity is extremely strong for people to find positions within healthcare management, right? Because healthcare itself, that sector is growing. So there will continue to be large demand for people with healthcare management education and healthcare management experience um, projected to grow extremely quickly um, throughout this next decade, trending faster than the average of all other occupations. And this data is from the Bureau of labor and statistics, so BLS, you can see there that the median annual wage for medical and health services man managers is pretty high. Now, caveat to that, that is not an entry level salary necessarily, right? And also that dollar figure, it is not region specific. That is um, an average, or it's actually not an average, it's a median. It's a median um, annual wage across the whole country. And as you know, in the Omaha market, wages are different than they are on the East Coast or on the West Coast, or even in rural places. So, so bear in mind that that is a median wage um, and that it captures the wage for managers who you know, are starting out, but also those who are very experienced in their careers. Now, with that said, this degree will prepare you for um, a job in health service management at a, at a competitive wage. May not exactly be that wage, but it will be competitive, um, especially compared to those who are seeking the same position, but who lack the Bachelor of Science degree. The third bullet point there lists the 
many jobs, and this is not an inclusive list, that fall into the category of healthcare management. <clears throat> With healthcare being so large and health systems having so many different arms to them, the number of jobs within healthcare um, where this degree would be a qualification or even a requirement for a position is very broad, from clinic managers to working in insurance um, and so many different departments. So ultimately, the takeaway here is that this degree um, uh, will set you up for a job and for a success in healthcare management more than a four-year bachelor's degree in, um, in general business or in a different field. Again, going back to our curriculum, uh, approximately half of it is general education, arts and sciences, which is very important to a well-rounded college degree, but the other half is so program specific and focused on healthcare. And that is why you will graduate armed with a wide range of skills and a lot of knowledge that will prepare you for a role in healthcare management. So again, in the program, I would say approximately half of the courses you will take are arts and sciences. That's that general education background. And in fact, those are the courses that you would be most likely to transfer in if you already have some college credit under your belt. Um, you don't necessarily need to take all of your arts and sciences in the first half and then shift completely over into your program specific, your business and healthcare management courses. What I like to do as your program director, but also as your advisor is I like to sort of mix them around a bit so that in any given semester, you're taking some arts and sciences, but also some of the healthcare business, healthcare management courses. I think it keeps it interesting. And I also think that it's good for students to be able to try to relate the arts and science concepts to the healthcare management concepts and synthesize the course information. Um, each student's course plan is very unique to them. One reason for that is because you may be transferring in some credit. So that means there are certain courses that you won't take that other students in the program may need to take. Um, it's also unique because within the arts and sciences portion of the curriculum, there are choices. So we do require you to take a certain number of humanities, but we have a lot of humanities that we offer. So which of the large pool of humanities that we offer would you like to take? It's not a very defined set. You have choice. You also have choice within the program specific healthcare management courses. There is an elective portion of the curriculum, which is also on this slide, and that offers you some flexibility in the courses that you would like to take that most suit your personal and professional interests. These online classes may be, depending on the semester, depending on the class, they may be five weeks long all the way up to 15 weeks long, which is the full fall or spring semester. You may find that your schedule um, with your professional life, where you work, and your family um, make it so that a five-week course works better for you. Now, a five-week course is going to be very short and also very intense because the entire three credits of the course must be delivered in a shorter amount of time. So that works out to, we actually have a formula, it works out to about 27 hours per week for that five week course that you are spending engaging with the course content. Now, 27 is not a hard and fast number. Some weeks will be higher, some weeks will be lower. And it would be difficult to even um, make a list of the actual amount of time per day so that you can check, is it really 27 hours? But those numbers, that number of hours does capture everything from getting into your course and looking at the required materials, the readings, the videos, the notes from the instructor, preparing your assignments, submitting your assignments, responding to others in the class, having that discussion through the discussion boards, um, and even just subconsciously thinking and applying the course content as you go about your daily life in your home and in your workplace. So those are the lengths of the classes. And then at the end of the program, Either in the second to last semester or in the very last semester, you will be taking a program uh, capstone course. 
And that's what it's called, it's Program Capstone. And it is a 15 week course, and it is meant to give you an opportunity to synthesize much of the knowledge and the, um, the course skills that you have gained throughout the entire curriculum into a business plan. That's what you write in this course. It is a progressive course, meaning that over the 15 weeks, you work on sections um, of preparing a business plan that proposes how you would go about solving a real world healthcare management problem. And we all know there are, there are problems, uh, opportunities for improvement in any place of work. So here you would identify a healthcare management related opportunity for improvement and use the evidence to describe how you would go about solving that and put that solution into a business plan format. The progressive nature of the course has you then working on um, the first section of the business plan, getting feedback from your instructor, who is me, um, revising that first section, adding to it the second section, getting feedback from me on the second section, and so on until over time, over the 15 weeks, you have built a full business plan that you would then defend in an oral presentation. So that is the opportunity that students have to demonstrate full synthesis of knowledge and skills gained from throughout the program in how to use evidence-based practice to guide their business decisions and strategic planning um, to better the healthcare management problem that they've identified. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Robertson. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how to apply step by step um, in the next few slides here. All right. Our application process is fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, first, you'll need to complete the free application on the Nebraska Methodist College uh, website. After that, we will need your official high school transcripts and any official college transcript set in. I will also need all transcripts from any and all colleges attended, uh, but if you've earned over 30 credit hours of college credit, I may not need uh, your high school transcript. Uh, next, I'll need to complete and send in the written statement. The writing prompts for the written statement is on the website, but I'll make sure that every applicant knows exactly what uh, is on uh, the writing prompt and also where to find it as well. Um, next, uh, we have the application criteria for students. A minimum cumulative GPA of a 2.5 is required for acceptance. If you have gone to several colleges, I will do a GPA calculation for you. Also, we do not require a minimum ACT score or even require the submission of an ACT score for acceptance. That leads us to our next question, uh, when should you apply? Uh, the answer to that is we, apply, we are able to accept students uh, year round as we will continue to accept qualified students until seats are filled. Applications are accepted for start terms of fall, spring, and summer. Applicants will work closely with me until their admissions file is complete. Once that happens, I will submit the student's file to be reviewed by the admissions committee. Transfer credit review is available through utilization of Transferology. I will assist with that credit review uh, in that transfer credit review. Official transfer credit review will be finalized by the registrar's office. And once a student is accepted and deposited, um, they'll have that full uh, transfer um, information that they need to know what classes will transfer over. All right, what will make you stand out as a strong applicant? All right, be sure to proofread your written statement and answer the writing prompt questions. Our written statement has five questions for candidates to answer. You can choose to answer the questions either by numbering them or by using essay format as long as all of the questions get answered. Be sure to put your full name on your application, written statement, and scholarship materials, especially when emailing them to us so we know who and where they belong to. Be sure to familiarize yourself with the admissions requirements and the college. I will let applicants know of important deadlines, so make sure to be actively checking your email that you use when you fill out the application. If you haven't already, uh, be sure to set up your voicemail so you're able to receive them. Also, I love getting questions from students. When a student asks me a question, that shows me that they're being thoughtful and they're being an active participant in their application process. 
If you are a transfer student, we have a few helpful checklist items listed for you here. First, be sure to review your previous transcripts uh, for a class to transfer over uh, to here. The transfer credits must be included on an official transcript. We do not accept unofficial transcripts. Be from an accredited institution. Be a letter grade of C minus or better and be comparable to what is required in the curriculum. Be, uh, be sure to review the transfer guides on the NMC website. Create a transferology.com account. Um, send official transcripts to NMC. Um, lastly, I'm going to hand things off uh, to Megan, and she's going to share some information about the scholarships that we offer uh, for this program. All right. Thank you, Austin and Dr. Robertson. So as Dr. Robertson mentioned at the top of the call, we do offer um, quite a few scholarship opportunities for our undergraduate healthcare management students. So I'm going to walk us through um, what those opportunities are. So the first scholarship opportunity that I'm going to chat about is referred to as our upfront merit scholarships. So these are based on a student's cumulative GPA. Um, there is not an application um, required for this specific scholarship. What we do is when you are reviewed for admission to the program, we also review you um, for an upfront scholarship at that time. So um, we do require that all of our scholarship recipients here at the college do have a FAFSA on file prior to starting classes. And um, that deadline for a uh, August start, for example, is June 1st. So while you don't need to have that FAFSA done um, at the time of application, we do want you to have that um, FAFSA on file before um, the start of classes, and we do have posted deadlines, and that will all be uh, posted also on your Upfront Merit Scholarship Award letter if you do receive one of these scholarships that we're going to chat about. Um, this scholarship in particular is um, stackable. So what that means is, is, that, is that if you receive other scholarships for Nebraska Methodist College, you can combine those scholarships together to build um, a scholarship package here at the college. So the way the Upfront Merit Scholarships are awarded, as I mentioned, is based on your cumulative GPA. So um, if you are a first-time first-year student, so if that means if you are a student coming to us directly from high school, um, the Upfront Merit Scholarship tiers look like um, this. So if you have a 3.0 um, to a 3.29, you're going to be awarded $2,500 per year. Um, and then it goes up from there. These scholarships are renewable. So you would receive the scholarship each year that you're here at Nebraska Methodist College and enrolled in the healthcare management program. And um, as I mentioned, um, to receive the award and to continue to receive the award, you need to have a FAFSA on file. For transfer students, the um, criteria is slightly different. Um, if you have a 3.0 to a 3.29, it's $2,000. And then as you can see, it goes up in thousand dollar increments um, up to that 3.6 range. So again, you don't need to fill out any scholarship applications for this. Um, what happens is when Austin reviews your file and works with the admissions committee um, regarding admission, we're also going to um, take that scholarship or that cumulative GPA calculation to determine which upfront merit scholarship you will also be awarded. So some additional scholarships that we commonly um, work with um, in regards to our healthcare management students, um, we have a scholarship that is referred to as the NMC Legacy Grant. So if you or if your parent or your sibling um, attended Nebraska Methodist College, um, excuse me, if you're is a current student or a graduate, you would be eligible for a one-time $2,000 um, scholarship and you would work with your admissions coordinator to make sure that that is verified and added to your account. The next scholarship, um, we are um, connected with United Methodist Church. So we have a one-time $1,000 scholarship for active UMC congregation members. So um, we would work with you to verify that membership. And that again, would be a scholarship that would be attached to your account as a one-time award. Uh, we also like to honor our Phi Theta Kappa students. So Phi Theta Kappa is a transfer honorary uh, Phi Theta, Theta Kappa is usually found at community colleges. So if you are an initiated member of Phi Theta Kappa, um, you'll want to make sure that we are aware of that and we would verify your um, initiation via 
usually there's a membership certificate. A lot of colleges now uh, listed on their college transcripts if you have been awarded the Phi Theta Kappa honorary status, but we would work with you and that's also worth a $1,000 one-time award. And lastly, um, another scholarship is our HOSA Leadership Scholarship. So we do work closely with HOSA, which is Health Occupation Student Association. And if you were involved in that organization in high school, we would work with you to verify that membership. And that is also worth another $1,000 time awards. So as I mentioned, all of these scholarships that we just talked about are stackable. Um, so you would work with um, your admissions coordinator, Austin, to um, chat about these and make sure that we can um, verify any um, membership or recognition associated with this so we can award these scholarships to your account. So our um, cost and financial aid. Um, our tuition rate for the fall 2023 is 623 per credit hour. And our average cost of books is just around $1,300 per year. Uh, this program does have um, one fee in particular, and that is the technology fee. And um, beginning in fall of 2023, that ta technology fee is $500 um, per semester for fall and spring. And then if you would choose to enroll in the summer term, that fee is a $250 fee. All right, so for those of you who are interested in still applying for our August start, the 2023-2024 FASPA, that would also be the FASPA that you would complete if you are interested in potentially a spring start time. So we definitely encourage you to go um, onto um, the FASPA website and kick off that process. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do require the FAFSA to receive any institutional scholarships here at the college, and then the FAFSA is also what is used to review any need-based scholarships that you might qualify for. When you fill out your FAFSA, um, or if you already have maybe completed the FAFSA, we just always want to make sure that you understand that um, we cannot see your information until our school is attached to your account, and you would do that by adding our school code in. There is a drop down, a drop -down box on um, the FAFSA that you can find our school, but if you want to just a, a quick look up, our code is listed here. Uh, the other thing that we all also like to chat about is, as I mentioned at the top of the presentation, we are connected with um, the Methodist Health System, and we do have some really great scholarship um, and tuition assistance programs available for Methodist employees who attend Nebraska Methodist College, one of which is our um, academy program. And if you are a Methodist employee um, and fit the um, requirements, there's things like employment, length, um, longev how long you've worked at the health system, how many hours you work, et cetera. Um, there is a full tuition, um, tuition benefit that you could potentially qualify for. Um, so we definitely encourage you, um, if you work at Methodist and actually any, any, um, employer to check with human resources to see what tuition assistance opportunities you could, um, potentially take advantage of. And we are always, um, more than willing to help. A lot of times they might need behalf, just um, again, you can reach out to Austin or we do have a dedicated financial aid counselor that works with our um, healthcare management students who's also a, a wonderful resource. All right, I am going to hand things back over to Austin and he is going to share with you um, the resources that are available to our healthcare management students. All right, thank you, Megan. Um, it is important to us that the same resources available to on-campus students are also available to our online students. Um, first up there, we have academic advising. When it comes to academic advising, you do have a great dedicated academic advisor in uh, Dr. Whitney Robertson. For academic support services, we do have an academic uh, support services office physically on campus, but those resources are also available to our online students as well. So if you have an accommodation that needs to be served or maybe you need assistance time uh, with uh, time management, uh, they can help you uh, with that virtually or over the phone. If you are local, we can also set up uh, one of those appointments that might work best for you. Uh, for writing support, uh, we also offer writing support physically here on campus. Um, and we also have uh, writing support and counseling services uh, available to our online uh, student population as well. Um, also, 
We have uh, John Moritz Library here on campus, which is a great resource uh, here for our students that are on main campus. Our library staff is a great resource uh, for those students, and they're wonderful to work with. Um, they also help to make sure you are right on uh, track with your research projects. Um, and of course, the John Moritz Library is the brick and mortar bookstore uh, or library, uh, but we also have an online um, uh, bookstore as well. Um, you can order uh, your books uh, from the online bookstore and they'll be sent to you. Um, they usually are connected uh, with your class schedule, so it's easy and uh, quick to get your books. And finally, we do have a campus health services and trio support services uh, for our students to utilize as well. Um, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and invite uh, Dr. Whitney Robertson back um, to the conversation, and we're going to go over some frequently asked questions uh, about the program. All right, uh, so the first question we have here is, will I be able to manage this program with family and work? Thank you. This program is, if, if nothing else, it's flexible. It is flexible in the, um, uh, the amount of coursework that you choose to take every semester that is really up to you. You can proceed as quickly as you want through the courses or as slowly as you need to go. It, you are the one who knows best what your family and your work schedule is like. And we very much want for your college coursework to fit in, but not overpower the other activities that you have going on. So if you feel that you are fine just taking two courses a semester or one course a semester, or maybe you have uh, a, a situation where you can power through a whole, a whole lot of classes in a semester, we want you to feel like you are able to balance everything. With the online nature of all of the courses, you certainly can log in and complete your coursework whenever you have the time available to you. All right, thank you. Um, how accessible are the faculty members? Highly accessible. And I really hope and I believe that this sets us apart from schools that may be a lot larger with much larger class sizes. Here at the college with total enrollment, as you saw, of 1,200. This in particular is a relatively small program. And so for many of the courses, the class sizes are small. But even in courses where class sizes are not considered small, maybe there are 20 students in a course. Faculty, that's a good ratio too. Faculty are very accessible. Um, and faculty, I I do teach in the program. I teach in other program, programs as well. And I can speak for faculty. We love to hear from students. We, uh, on the very first day of the course, we provide our contact information. A lot of us also provide our cell phone numbers. We want you to feel like you have multiple ways to get in touch with us. And I always tell my students, the sooner I hear from you in the class, the better, because then I know that we can establish a dialogue and you can get to know me better and feel free to ask questions about assignments or about concepts. And I'm not, I'm certainly not alone. We as faculty love to hear from students. Yeah. All right. Um, as a student, would I have to come to campus? Not in this program, not, you can, you can, and I have seen this, you can never come to campus except for graduation. And even for graduation, um, many students are unable to attend. So it is possible for you to not come to campus, but we welcome you if you would like to come to campus. Again, there are certain courses that there is not only the online option, but the in-classroom option. You're welcome to take the in-classroom option. Um, you can come to campus to collect your books or we could ask the bookstore to send your books to you if you're not able to come to campus. There are a number of great resources that Austin mentioned, such as the library or student health that are available to you if you would want to and can come to campus, but it is not absolutely required. However, if you do come, give us a little bit of notice and we will be happy to set up a great tour for you. 
All right, we might have talked about this a little bit earlier, but will my previous credits transfer? Yes, I think we did cover this a bit earlier, and we will work very hard with you to look at each credit closely to determine whether it can transfer. We pride ourselves on being as transfer friendly as possible, and we want to live up to that. All right, how big are the class sizes? Oh, great. Well, I think I may have touched on this a bit as well. The class sizes range. I do not believe we have class sizes that exceed 20 students. That's going to be a very different experience that, than what you might have at a large state school. So 20 students would be the, um, the upper limit. On the lower end, once we get into more of the business focused courses in the program, it is not uncommon to be in a class with just a handful of maybe four other students. Um, and that's a great class size too. You, you're still able to get a lot of great interaction and discussion. And then the faculty to student ratio is very favorable. Okay. I have already been working in this field. Is this the right degree for me? Great question. The types of students who seek this degree range very much from, uh, from out of high school to have a little bit of college experience with no health care to have a little bit of college experience with some health care, all the way up to have a lot of health care experience. Very wide range of students, which makes it great for discussion once you get into classes with people from so many different paths. If you've already been working in the field, whether that's for a long time or a short amount of time, this could very well be the right degree for you, especially if you recognize that a bachelor's degree is necessary for you to achieve the role or be on the career path that you have your sights set on. It's extremely difficult, and I, I almost want to say impossible, but I will be conservative and say extremely difficult to rise to an executive level position if you do not have at least a college degree, oftentimes um, a postgraduate degree. So even if you have been working in the field for a number of years, this degree um, could be an extremely valuable investment for you because it will be, it is almost always a requirement to get to the higher levels of management. Not only that, if you've been working in the field and even if you are continuing to work in healthcare while you're taking this degree, that's fantastic because as you are studying and taking your courses, you can be translating what you're learning in the classroom or the online environment to your workplace. I mean, how great to be taking a class in healthcare quality and learning about some of the quality improvement methodologies, but then in your day job, you um, are looking around and you're seeing how those methodologies can actually be applied. That really strengthens the learning experience. All right, perfect. So last question here, uh, will this degree prepare me for an MBA program? Great, so that's a perfect setup. Thanks for teeing that up for me because <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud to be the director for this program, but also for the MBA program. And if you were to want to get your MBA, of course, we would love to have you here at the college. It's an MBA in healthcare program. And there are also a lot of, a lot of other institutions that offer an MBA. This program, the Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Management will prepare you to get your postgraduate degree, your master's degree. Why would you want to get your master's degree? Well, an MBA in particular is the, probably the most widely recognized graduate degree that there is. And there are, are MBAs in every industry. And of course, healthcare is no exception. An MBA is an example of the type of degree that would be a minimum qualification for an applicant to reach that executive level of healthcare management. This bachelor's degree um, helps to prepare you because it lays a lot of the foundation for you to succeed in a master's program because you learn so much about um, organizational management, about leadership, about effective communication. And these are skills that are emphasized even more in a master's program. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Robertson. Uh, finally, uh, we'll have uh, next steps. 
Uh, really, if you're thinking if you're thinking that you might be interested in this program, it's real simple. Just contact me. I'm happy to uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one visit, meet you in person, uh, meet you virtually. Um, also, I email and uh, have phone conversations with a lot of different students that might be interested as well. And if you are thinking about taking the next step um, and solidifying your spot here, the first thing to do is to fill out the application and then send in your application materials. Then after students are admitted, the next thing to do after that would be apply for additional scholarships. But that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you throughout that entire process. Um, thank you all uh, for attending our webinar this afternoon. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.